Good evening. October the 14th, uh, 2020, First Baptist Church, Sellersburg, Indiana, and continuing our series of new lessons from the Old Testament. And as you may remember, we've been walking through what's commonly referred to as the minor prophets and just looking at them one book at a time. We've chosen not to look at the prophets as a group, but just individually looking at the books. And I think uh, I'm enjoying this, and I hope that you'll find uh, some lessons from the book of Amos. Uh, if you haven't read the book of Amos lately, let me encourage you to maybe even stop the video and and read the book of Amos. It's not that hard to read, and it's a good read, and I think it'll bless you. Let me just share a few thoughts with you about Amos. Now, what we know about Amos was that he was a shepherd in Tokoa. Tekoa. I can't pronounce the name of the city. Tekoa. Uh, about 10 miles south of Jerusalem. He made it clear in his writings that he did not come from a family of prophets. He was not, uh, even in his own mind, didn't consider himself one. He was simply a grower of sycamore figs, and he called himself a shepherd in the seventh chapter. His connection to the simple life really helped people understand the, the message, the center of what he was trying to communicate. He had a heart against the oppressors and the voiceless. He wasn't a prominent person. He was a simple man. Now, the Bible tells us he prophesied two years before the earthquake, uh, which would be somewhere in the middle of the 8th century B.C. during Uzziah's reign. Uh, Jeroboam would have been king in Israel. Uh, so somewhere in 767 to 755, somewhere in that window. Uh, he comes, of course, from the southern kingdom of Judah. Amos delivers his prophecy against the northern kingdom and against the ruling nations around him. And um, some even of those resistant Israelites. But Jeroboam's reign had been quite profitable for the northern kingdom, at least materially. However, moral decay had occurred at that time and if we were to be very honest, the spiritual decay overshadowed the financial or uh, material gain. Amos comes to town and he's fed up. Most of the prophets uh, kind of talk about redemption and restoration. Amos devotes only five verses for consolation. He rips them. He preaches a hard message. He shares God's word as the privileged people of Israel who have no love for their neighbor. They take advantage of others. They look out for their own concerns. He does not pull any punches, kind of our modern vernacular. Old Vance Havner, one of the great preachers of the last century, said Amos was not invited to preach. Uh, the ministerial groups actually asked him to leave. He was not popular among the religious, among the prophets and the priests. But more than any other book of Scripture, I think the book of Amos holds God's people accountable for their ill treatment of others. Points out the failure of the people to embrace God's principle of justice. They were selling off needy people for goods. They were taking advantage of the helpless. They were oppressing the poor. The men were using women immorally. They were drunk on their own economic success. And they were just simply intent on in strengthening their own financial positions. The people had lost the concept of caring for one another. The people had lost the idea of a heart for their neighbor. Amos rebukes them and tells them that lifestyle is evident that they have forgotten God. Now, there are certain times where you just kind of pause reading the Bible and go, wow. Is he talking about modern day America? Is he talking about the big cities in the United States? Is he talking about some of the uh, political powers in our world today? Various cultures throughout history? This is a powerful message. The people of Israel in the north enjoyed this unprecedented success, but yet God calls a simple, quiet shepherd farmer to travel from his home and take a message of judgment to the Israelites. The people in the north use Amos' stature as a foreigner as an excuse to ignore his message and to continue in their sins. However, others were not quite so sure. Rather than seeking out opportunities to do justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly, they embrace their arrogance, their idolatry, their self-righteousness, materialism. Amos just is filled with content and disdain for them because of the hypocrisy of their lives. God had blessed Israel, and they had turned their back on his commands. He closes out his book with a brief glimpse, really, of restoration and that's more directed to Judah, really, than the northern kingdom. Amos has a hard message, but a heart message. 
repent, turn back to God, because judgment is certain. Now, we as Christians live in a world where injustice is rampant. We need a good reminder, I think, that in the believer's life, there must be a balance of practical Christianity and prophetic voice. It's easy to send money to the missionaries around the world while children starve in our own town. We need to be careful. Jesus taught us to love our neighbors. To love those who use us. To be a witness to those who would betray us. Amos' message rings a lot of bells, doesn't it? The prophecy of Amos would simplify choices in our lives, really. Can we serve God without loving others? Service to God and service to others are two sides of the same coin. Christians don't live simply in a relationship with God that voids our responsibility towards others. We must be sharing the gospel with them. We must love them enough to tell them that Jesus offers hope. Amos reminds us both the physical and spiritual needs of people matter in God's picture of justice. Now, we live in a culture that is crying for justice, but it is not crying for biblical justice. More often than not, the cries for justice are selfish. More often than not, the attention of others to get justice has little to do with biblical principles of caring for hurting people. We must be discerning. We must ask God to give us wisdom. We must ask God to show us how to truly love people while we love him. There are some wonderful verses found in the book of Amos, some of which you'd probably be familiar with. I would uh, share a couple of these tonight in closing. First off, Amos 3.3. Can two walk together except they be agreed? What a great wedding sermon comes out of that. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Amos 5.4 says this, For thus saith the Lord unto the house of Israel, Seek ye me, and ye shall live. Continuing down at verse 13 through 16, he says, Therefore the prudent shall keep silent in that time, for it is an evil time. Seek good and not evil, that you may live, and so the Lord, the God of hosts, shall be with you as he hath spoken. Hate the evil, love the good, establish judgment in the gate. It may be that the Lord God of hosts will be gracious unto the remnant of Joseph. Every once in a while, I'll hear somebody say, well, you know, God's going to have to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah if he doesn't judge America. I'm not a big fan of that statement because God was just when he judged Sodom and Gomorrah. Some of our cities are rampant with evil, but God's got a witness there. He's got a remnant there. We need to seek justice, biblical justice. We need to hate the evil and love the good. Establish judgment in the gate. Now that's a reference to the gate. That's the place of judgment in the city. The city would have a wall around it, and at the gate is where they would do business. It's where they would conduct the legal matters as well. And when we do that, the Bible says, it may be that the Lord, the God of hosts, will be gracious unto the remnant of Joseph. I want to challenge you to read the book of Amos. I want to challenge you to examine your heart. Do you love the things of this world more than the principles of God? Are you more invested in the stuff of this world or in the principles of godliness. If you're not certain that you have a relationship with Jesus, let me challenge you to come to him tonight. Please visit our website, fbc-sellersburg.org. Click on the link at the top that says Need Hope, and that'll help you find the gospel, how to understand what it means to love Jesus, 
how to find salvation through him. But tonight I want to call Christians to justice. Biblical, principled justice. Hate the evil. Love the good. Practice godliness at the gate. Judgment is certain. Are we following those principles? Enjoy the book of Amos this week, dear friends. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray your blessings on the reader and the hearer of your word. Speak to our hearts, Lord, and teach us to be more like you. In Jesus' name, amen.